brand new out the door, 6513 because I got a good deal on it. It's kind of like a military discount thing. I just sold this bike for $5,500. So uh, my friend's getting a good bike, and I'm getting the CBR600RR and picking that up on Tuesday. Today is Saturday. Um, frame sliders. Probably the best upgrade by far. Scorpion slip on exhaust. Sounds amazing. Zero gravity windshield helps a lot because you can actually tuck. This is the tall zero gravity double bubble. And uh, you can actually tuck down behind it and get all the wind out of the way when you're cruising, which is nice. Around town, it doesn't really make a difference, but it's mostly for cruising. It's also eliminated that ugly rear fender back there. But just a quick overview of this bike. Start with the basics. Your fuel locks, which is a nice thing that almost all sport bikes have. Almost all motorcycles have a locking fuel. Fire it up on your um, instrument gauge here. You've got the clock and odometer, which you can see hopefully. Trip A, trip B. I've gotten 234.9 miles since my last fill up, which is a new record for me. Awesome. Um, I've done a lot. I've done. I put in foam here and all over the place inside this instrument cluster, and that has gotten rid of that fairing buzz, which is another cool thing. Uh, when you're going through your clock to set your clock, you hold, press and hold the reset button, and then you'll see it flash. And you hit reset once, and it goes to this, the first number, the hour. Hit reset again, and it goes to the minutes, and you hit. Reset a third time, it flashes, and then you hit mode and it stops flashing. To change the numbers, you hit mode, obviously. There's only two buttons on this thing. On the gauge here, there is a low fuel light, which comes on usually around with 2.8 gallon, 2 gallons used up, which leaves 1.3 or somewhere thereabouts remaining. There's an FI, which I'm assuming is a fuel injection light, and uh, that's never come on. The oil light's on right now, just because it does that when you turn it on. After it starts up, it goes off. There's a neutral indicator, your high beams, your turn signal indicators. Turn signals are just like most sport bikes. You push it over to turn them on, push it any direction to turn them on, you push it in to cancel. High beams and low beams, and there's hazard lights on this. The clutch is adjustable. Um, what else is there? You can turn on your, if you put it all the way over to park, turn the key pass on, put it on park, take your key back out. If you need to leave your hazards on, you just do that and then you turn your hazards on. So that way you don't have your key in your ignition. If you turn, you turn the handlebars to the left, turn the key all the way to the left, it locks the ignition, which is also a pretty standard feature on bikes. So no one can just roll your bike away, because unless they roll it in a circle. There is a keyhole right there. Put it in, turn your key clockwise. You lift up on the seat, and you pull it back. And then, um, compared to most sport bikes, there's actually a decent amount of underseat storage. Two helmet locks. Take the wire out, put it through the D-ring on your helmet, and then you loop it through there and you put your seat back on and the helmet hangs off the side. You're not supposed to ride with the helmet attached. You can do it, I don't recommend it, but it, it doesn't make any contact with the tire if you do. Like I said, there's one on each side so you can lock on two helmets. If you want to carry a passenger helmet, I would recommend um, just bungee cording it to the back end so that way it's sitting on top of the seat. Your battery's right there, obviously. There's a fuse box right there rear brake fluid. You can't really see the reservoir, but you can see the, the cap. Up here you have your front brake fluid. Put your seat back on, you just slide it back in. I hear it click when you push it down. It means it's on right. Don't forget your keys. This bike came with two keys. I lost one of them because I left it in the keyhole and I think someone stole it. Luckily the bike didn't get stolen though. The suspension is adjustable. It comes with a tool to adjust the suspension. To start it, you need to have a kickstand up unless the bike is in neutral and you need to pull the clutch in to put it in neutral. When you pull the clutch in, have the kickstand up or just put it in neutral and it'll fire right up. Turn the bike off. Turn the key. There's a bunch of ways to kill a bike. Um, I've heard that you're supposed to kill it with the key. The kill switch is a kill switch. It's not like a turn the bike off switch. It's uh, I think it's supposed to be used in more like cases of emergency. I was told by someone a long time ago, turn it off with the key, that's what I always do. Someone else might disagree with that. 
there's a good centimeter of play in the throttle, which I'm not a fan of, but uh, it was pretty much like that from the start, and it just never really bothered me enough to do anything about it. Down here you'll see the wheel level window on the right side of the bike. If I tip it over to hold it straight up, you can see the oil. And then right there's the oil fill cap. But overall, it's a great bike. On the freeway, you don't need to downshift. You can cruise in sixth gear all over the place, and then you can just throttle up. It's got good roll on for passing. Off the line, because it's a, it's a parallel twin engine, it has a lot of torque from the factory. I think the number was 48.5. I've got some aftermarket parts in it, so I'm sure mine's a little bit higher than that. And it's just, I mean, it really zips off the line. It'll pull ahead of most crotch rockets. If you don't launch, if you just roll off the line, it'll pull ahead of most crotch rockets, and then you will quickly get passed by them. As, I mean, as long as they're 600 or bigger, four-cylinder anyway. You have to. You don't have to run 93 in this bike, which is another little benefit. Save a little bit more money on fuel. It can run 87. I think it's tuned to run 87 because if you use premium gas, your performance will be a little bit better, but your fuel economy will be a little bit worse. Up front, it's got pretty awesome brakes. It's got really good front front end stopping power. I'm not real impressed with the back, but you're supposed to use your front brakes to as 75% of your stopping power. It's got a pedal rotor, which you see the rotor is that little notches out of it there. It's also drilled, which is supposed to help cooling it off. It has a dual two pistons up front. So you see the two calipers, there's a caliper over here and there's a caliper on the other side. So there's two rotors, basically got two sets of brakes in the front. The back end only has one, which kind of goes along with the concept of using your front brake to stop more than your rear brake. Everything else in this bike that I can think of is is just like any other bike. Um, you, there's an idle adjustment right here. You know, play with your idle a little bit, make it idle smoother, make it idle lower. If it's idling too low, you'll know. <laughs> Turn it up. It's pretty obvious. One thing I was really disappointed with is that it does not have a digital speedometer. I don't like uh, digital tachometers, I prefer an analog tachometer, but I like digital speedometers. I'm glad it has a digital odometer, but the speedometer is kind of disappointing. If they're going to have an analog speedometer on a 650cc bike, you'd think that it would go past 140. Even if the bike won't from the factory go over 140, most bikes will have, a lot of bikes I've seen anyway have speedometers that go up to 180, and that bike's not necessarily going to be able to do 180 from the factory. I can bury the needle on this bike. I've had it past 140. When I bought it, it would, I mean, it would do 140 when I bought it. So, that's 140 indicated, by the way. Actual speed's up to 8% lower, sort from what I've calculated using GPS. New for 2009, they did upgrade to a digital, digital um, instrument gauge, which looks a lot better. Kind of ticked me off, because I have an 08, so I was like, I got screwed. I got the last year of the old, the old thing. Resale value on this bike is terrible. Trade in on this bike, I owed, I owed fifty nine hundred on it. Trade in, it was thirty six hundred at the dealership, and I was just appalled by that. And I wasn't going to trade this bike in for thirty six hundred dollars, especially with all the aftermarket parts. You're sitting completely upright when you ride this bike. You can ride for hours. And the only thing that bothered me are my legs, but. I can sit on the bike when I'm cruising and just put my legs on the frame sliders. So when I take a long trip, I do that every now and then to keep my legs from cramping up. So I'm going to wrap this up. Really the uh, ultimate conclusion here on this bike is don't buy it if you want to track race. Don't buy it if you, if you want to do triple digit speeds everywhere because up to 120 miles an hour, this thing hauls ass. But over 120, the acceleration drops off really badly. And if you're looking to keep up with guys on 600s who are driving triple digit speeds, it's not going to happen. Around town, it's an exceptionally great performer. It has a, a lot of mid-range power that most bikes do not have. It has good low end. I cruise around, I ship, shift around 3,000 RPMs in the city. Shift at 3,000 RPMs, so obviously it's functional below that. 